Good morning, RGS students. I love fall time. It is so gorgeous outside. A little cool, but the sun's out. And I decorated my porch, so I have corn stalks and mums and pumpkins. I love this time of year. And if you remember from last year, I love the apple cider donuts. That just made my day. I'd come in in the morning and there would be an apple cider donut in a little bag on my desk with a little love note from one of my students. I love that. You guys made me feel so special. <laughs> now today we are going to be working on project number nine. Project number nine. It is the folk art Fox, folk art fox. Now, folk art is, it's an art form or something that's passed on from generation to generation. So if you think about folk art, you can think about maybe if your mom or dad or grandma and grandpa or somebody in your family taught you something and it's passed on from generation to generation. So maybe your grandma taught you how to cook or sew or make cookies, anything like that. Or maybe you had a grandpa or an uncle that made wood projects with you, maybe a birdhouse. So you can think about the people in your life that helped you learn something, okay? And that's kind of what folk art is. It's an art style that's passed down from generation to generation, okay? And today we're gonna to be making a fox. Um, it's actually a red fox. There are 25 different species of fox. Yes. And foxes live on every continent except Antarctica. They must not like penguins. I don't know. So this is our project that we will be making today. It's a cute little folk art red fox. And you're going to be able to color. You're going to be able to choose one color, but any color you want. So where you can see where I have black and white and then I chose my color as red. But you can choose blue or purple or orange. If that's your creative choice today. Now our vocab words today. We'll be using shapes to create patterns and then we're going to be making a lot of black and white areas. So we will be using positive and negative space. You'll hear me talking about that. And this is a new word, dynamic composition. Ooh, doesn't that just sound fun? It's dynamic. So we're gonna fill in all the areas around the fox and create a very well-balanced, dynamic composition. Don't you just wanna look at this? It's so fun to look at. And then our last word today is monochromatic. Monochromatic means one color. Mono means one, chromatic means color. Monochromatic. And like I said, the one color I chose was red because black and white are technically neutrals. We call those neutrals. Now, over here, I talked to you about what folk art is. And we will be using this example to make our patterns. So I will take a picture of this and it will be on the presentation. So when you are making your patterns, you'll just wanna pause it on this picture so you can um, use all those shapes, okay? All right, boys and girls. Now today, you will need one of your nine by 12 papers and a pencil and your Sharpie or black marker to start. So this is all we need to start, okay? I'll be back here soon. Okay, boys and girls, I'm back. Now with this project, I'm going to talk about spatial reasoning. Ooh, that's a huge word, but it's an easy concept because all you need is your pencil and your hand. And you have both of those, right? 
Now, spatial reasoning is deciding where to put things on your paper. We could also call it a composition. It's composition, but this helps us decide with our hand where, how far to print things. So basically proportion also. So I would like you to start by putting your finger in the middle of the paper and then jump it up just a little bit. You're going to make a dot. Then you're going to set your whole hand down. On the other side of your hand, you're going to make another dot. This is going to help us know where to put our fox's head, where to start. Next, you are going to make two diagonal lines or the letter V, right? The letter V. Now you've made this shape before when you've worked on your ice cream cones. Then you are going to make a curved line right over the top. Again, this is reminding us of our ice cream cone. So we are building on skills that we have already learned. Okay, next boys and girls. In the middle of your fox's head, you're going to make a dot. And then you'll put your hand at the bottom of your paper. Okay, About two fingers. You can do it however is more comfortable. You're going to make another dot. So from the dot in the middle of your fox's head to the dot you just made towards the bottom of your paper, but not all the way to the bottom, you are going to make a vertical line. A vertical line. Good job. Now, on the other side of your paper, you are going to put your whole hand and then make a dot. You are going to connect these with a straight horizontal line. Now you can see by moving my hand around the paper and using three fingers or two fingers or my whole, all my fingers, it's really helping me with the proportion of my fox and knowing how far apart everything should be. All right, the next line. I want you to think of that big curved rainbow line. You're going to connect this dot and this dot. It is the back of your fox. Okay, just like that. So connect your fox. Good. Next is the tail. So I want you to put two fingers down here at the bottom, the bottom of the body in this corner, two fingers, and then make another dot. Now, ancient Indo-European language, they stated that fox, the name fox originated in Europe, and it meant thick-haired tail. Wow, I didn't even know that. So the word fox originated in ancient Indo-European language, and it meant thick-haired fox. Wow, that's pretty cool. And remember, foxes can live on all the continents except Antarctica. Now your fox's tail is going to be this thick. So make a curved line. Little curve and then big curve. Now I know this line might take you a couple times to make. So just pause me whenever you need to. And that's why we're going to use a pencil to start with this project because we have never drawn a fox before with me. And then you're going to go down to the bottom. You're going to follow that line, but leave it really thick. And then you can bring that line around. And you might say like, oh, I don't like the end of my tail. And that's okay. 
you know what? We're drawing with pencil. So we can erase it. Maybe you want it to be a fluffier tail. You want to bring it around like that. Make it look a little, a little bit fluffier. And that's fine too. We just want it to be a nice, thick tail. Nice, thick fox tail. And if you don't want to make that big of a curved line, you definitely do not have to. Now, in the fox's tail, we're going to show how the tail has that white tip by making a zigzag line. So this area will be white. And then we're going to go over to the fox's head. We're going to give the fox two ears, very pointy triangles with little triangles inside. Kind of like cat ears, right? And then you'll give your fox a nose that is a curved line right above the nose. And then this is a sleepy fox. Oh, he's resting in the forest, listening to his forest friends. So you are going to make a small little U shape on each side. And next, remember fox, foxes have that white or that stripe in the middle of their head. It's colored and then on each side of their head there's a white stripe. So we are going to represent that by drawing some lines. So from the fox's nose you're going to make a slight curved line up to the ear. So you can see the three parts of the head. Good job. Now, down here at the very bottom, we're going to make the fox's legs. Use your two fingers at the corner and make a dot. With that dot, you're going to go straight up. This is a short line, remember, it doesn't touch the next line. That will represent the first leg. And then two more fingers back. You're going to make a curved line and that will be your fox's leg. Remember he is sitting. Your fox is sitting. And then this is his hind leg. You're going to make a bigger curved line up. Now these two lines can be a little tricky just remember, this one is longer. Think of like a hot dog laying down. And then this is rounder. Think of a hamburger. So a hot dog and a hamburger. Okay? That might help you. Now, boys and girls, with this part, we're going to stop. Take our marker. And you are going to trace all of your pencil lines. So trace over every pencil line you just made. Okay? And I'll be back in a minute. Okay, boys and girls, I'm back. Everything is traced. All my pencil lines are traced with Sharpie. Now this is when you can magic erase. Remember when you use Sharpie, you can erase over the top of Sharpie. Sharpie stays, but the pencil lines disappear. That's why we call it magic erase. So you want to brush off 
all of your little eraser crumbs. And next, we are going to look at all of the folk art designs or patterns. Now, on my fox example, you can see how I repeat them. So I chose a leaf, a tree, and a triangle for the background. So if I look over here, you can see a leaf, a tree, and a triangle. Now, you are going to choose three of these designs and I do want you to use these. Today we're not going to do whatever we want for patterns. We are definitely going to choose three of these. So you may choose whatever three you would like for your background and then you will repeat them. So that's what I would like you to do next. Now, like I said, I made the trees, the leaves, and the triangles. Maybe you would like to make the flower shape, though there's several different flower shapes. This one up on top. So I think I'm going to make this flower shape, this heart, and squares. So all over in the background, I am going to make that flower shape. So it starts with four petals, and then there's a little circle in between all of them. And now I will repeat that pattern. You do get a creative choice though, boys and girls. Even though you have to pick three patterns, your creative choice is how big you would like to make your patterns and it can change. You can see this flower design is bigger than this one. Maybe when I go under my fox here, I want to make it even smaller. So you're repeating the same pattern, but it's your creative choice how big you would like to make it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw this pattern, but you can see I'm leaving spaces in between, right? I'm not drawing them right next to each other because I wanna add my other two, remember? the heart, the big heart with the little heart inside, and then some filled in squares. So maybe over here, I want to add a heart. And then down here, I want to add another one. You can also add the other shape that you chose as you move across your paper or your composition. Maybe over here, I want to add my square first and then my heart. Maybe over here, I want to add a little tiny square. You might even want to go in and just randomly 
add more little squares to really fill up that composition, make it a dynamic composition. Now up here, I need a heart. I don't have a heart up here yet. And then you can also make a few shapes going off the paper. Maybe I want to add one more right there. So I want you to just have fun with this part, okay? You are going to go all around your fox, filling in the frame with all three of the shapes that you chose. Maybe up here I want a large square with some little squares around it. Again, I could make a square going off my paper. And maybe a small, medium, and large square. Now I do have a little room in here. Maybe I'll make a little heart. And then draw two smaller squares. And back here, ooh, I can even make, look at, I can make a heart going off the page. And then maybe a couple smaller squares. I think I need one more little heart up here. So you can see, boys and girls, it's actually really fun just to add random shapes all over your background. And I love that it just looks like it's very whimsical. It looks happy, like the fox is dreaming of all these shapes floating around. And we're also going to add some of the shapes to make patterns on the fox's body. So when you're done with the background, you are going to choose new shapes. So whatever shapes that you already made, so I already made this one and this one and the square. So this flower, the heart, and the square. Now, I'm going to use any other shapes I want except those three. So do not use the same three that you just used for the background. Use something different. Like I think for the foxes down here at his legs, I think I'm going to make this tulip shape. I'm going to make this first one right here. So I'm going to make the top of the tulip first, the three circles, the stem, and the leaves. Okay, now I want to repeat my pattern. So I'm going to make two more over here, but just a little bit smaller. So you can see I'm repeating my shapes to make patterns, but I just made it a little bit smaller. Mm, 
let's see. I kind of like this flower too. It basically just looks like a zigzag line that's connected in a circle. So I'm going to try to make that on my fox's head. So it basically looks like a sunshine. I'm just going to keep making that triangle line all the way around. Then there is a circle in the middle and then all the way around there are little circles. Yeah, I like that. And then maybe I'll make the circle pattern down his nose. Oh, that's so cute. Now it's your creative choice. If you would like to add anything to the ears or the the eye area or the nose I think I'm going to leave that area I kind of like it I left it plain in this one too I added some dots oops that's my alarm I got to get ready for my next class but I want you guys to continue filling in different patterns on your fox. Let's see. I really like this leaf here too. So I'm going to use that same pattern this way and then this way. That's the stem. And then there's a leaf on the top. And then it has symmetrical leaves. So it has leaves on either side, just like this. Reminds me of a vine, more of a vine. I like that. And then maybe in the background of the tail, you can add a few triangles. Yeah, just a few to add a little more detail. Again, I'm going to leave the tail, the tip of the tail, white. I'm going to leave the tail white. Now on the fox's body, I like this leaf pattern and that's the same leaf that some of you drew with your pumpkin. So it's a straight line and then curved line, curved line, straight line, curved line, curved line, straight line, curved line, curved line. Remember, we are in the forest. And then we do need to go back with another, probably one more pattern in there. This looks like a flower petal, or you can also call it, call it a paisley. So it looks like a flower petal or a raindrop. And then there's two circles inside. I think it looks nice with the leaf pattern. So you can randomly draw this little paisley all over around the leaves. All right. Oh, our fox is looking so awesome. Okay, boys and girls, now what your job is, you're going to go back 
and you are going to trace all of your patterns. So I'm going to let you do that. I'm going to go teach my next class and I'll be back in a little while. And I can't wait to see your boxes. Remember, we get the color next. Woohoo! Hi boys and girls, I'm back. Now, what I'm going to show you today is how to magic erase. I might rock the table a little. We talked about this last time just a little bit. And those of you who have had me as a teacher before probably rem remember what magic erasing is. After you draw with pencil and you trace over all of your pencil lines with your Sharpie, you go back with an eraser and you basically erase over your entire project. And the magic is that the pencil lines disappear, but all the Sharpie lines stay. So you will still see all of your Sharpie lines. Now, I know I added a lot of details to the back of mine. Those eraser crummies, it's nice if you can hold your project over a garbage can so you don't get those eraser crummies all over the kitchen table. Now, you might see a few here and there. Just do the best you can. And then, there's the example of the fox again. The finished one. So what you can do is you're going to choose one marker color. Not black, gray, or brown. Not black, gray, or brown. Those are neutrals. So you can tell in this one, I chose red. Maybe this one, I might choose orange. I kind of like the warm colors for the fox. So you will color in some shapes with black and some, some shapes with your color, which I'm choosing orange. But make sure it's the same shapes. That's what creates that dynamic composition. So if I'm looking at mine, all of the triangles, I colored black. All of the stems, I colored black. And most of the little circles, I colored black. This circle, the circles that are three together, that was a different design. Okay? And then, as you look around the outside, I left all my trees white. And then I colored all my leaves red. Now, you might need to listen to that again. So just stop and rewind, and you can listen to that one more time. So as I'm looking around my project, I'm going to choose to color all of the little circles in my flowers around the edge. I'm going to choose to color those black but then leave the rest of the flower, the flower petals, I'm going to leave those white. Now for the hearts, I think I'm going to color the outside of the heart black and leave the inside white. So I need to go around to every heart and color the outside black and leave the inside white. This demonstrates positive and negative space. Ooh, 
I like that. Now, if you don't have a Sharpie, remember, you can just use your black marker. So this process will take a little bit of time. So I will continue to work on it. Because I have a couple more. And then I'll come back and show you when I'm finished. And the outside here, and my squares, I think I'm gonna color those too. I think the squares need to be colored in. Or maybe just the large squares. Since it's technically a different pattern. So maybe just this large size square. Yeah, I like that idea. So every large square I need to color in. But then every medium and small square, I'm going to leave white. I like that plan. Now when you color the fox, you want to color his nose black. And you can color the inside of his ear black. And then you can start thinking about which patterns on his body you want to leave and which ones you would like to color black. Now I think I like the way it looks when the stems and the leaves are black. So I'm going to color those black and also these circles, the three circles at the top. that. Let's see, and maybe I'm actually going to color over these dots inside of the paisley. I think I would like those to be solid. Yeah, I like that. That looks nice. And then around my box out of his head here, I'm going to color in all of those circles. Yeah, I like that. Let's see, and then on his tail, I'm going to color in the triangles. And I think I'm going to leave everything else. Remember, I still need to go back and color some of these large squares and the outside of those hearts. Now, when it comes to coloring in the fox, I want you to color very carefully because you have a lot of designs to color around. And if you use the broad side of your marker, you can color a larger area. Now I think I'm going to leave this part white, but I want to color this whole section orange. So I'm even going to color over this flower. Since it's the only flower like that, I'm going to color over that. I like it colored. Now down here, remember, all of your fox. So you're going to need to color around your flowers. And again, color carefully. And you do need to leave white areas also. So my leaves would remain white. 
and the top of my flower would remain white. So you're going to have to use your best coloring for these parts. And maybe you would like to even color the paisleys in, but leave the leaves. So if you would like to do that for a creative choice, you definitely can. So if I color my paisleys in, that's what it looks like. But remember, we're not just going to color over the whole thing. We need white areas. So I'm still leaving all the leaves white. Yeah, I kind of like the paisleys colored in. So again, you're going to carefully color over and around and up and down and everywhere. Okay, so I want you guys to keep, keep coloring in your fox. I'm going to keep coloring in my fox. Over on this side, I'm going to leave the leaves white. So I'm going to have to be very careful, right, when I'm coloring around all of these leaves. But they look awesome white. So I am definitely going to leave them white. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to finish up and I will show you what it looks like when it's all done in just a minute. Okay, boys and girls, there is the finished folk art fox. He's so cute. I can't wait to see all of yours. I know they're going to be so beautiful. And remember, you don't have to make yours an orange. You can choose green, purple, blue, pink, or you can use red like my other one. After you're done with your fox, though, I would like you to use one of the assessment tools. You don't have to show this to me, but it's a good idea as an artist to ask yourself these questions and think about your artwork. So you may do this with a parent or a friend or a brother or sister and just have them listen to what you think about your art. Okay, boys and girls. It was so great making the folk art fox with you. I love it. They're so cute. All right. I'll see everybody soon. Bye, boys and girls.